HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Me, 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 but also you. The Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> Okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the Name Your Price tool from Progressive. Oh man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm gonna need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The Name Your Price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by audible.com. You can go to audibletrial.com slash business growth, sign up for a free trial and go exploring. Check out all of the audio content that is there, uh, including, uh, but not limited to the audiobooks. The Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to enjoy inclusion on lists of the best podcasts to listen to. And this is really because of the guests. These are folks who have expertise in particular areas of business, and they join me for a conversation where they share that expertise with all of you. Today is no different. My guest today is Rocky Lalvani. Rocky serves as Chief Profitability Officer for small business owners on a fractional basis. He's a certified profit first professional and helps business owners implement the system. Rocky helps business owners transform their business from a cash-eating monster into a money-making machine. Thanks so much for joining me today, Rocky. Thank you so much, Diane, for having me as your guest. And I I have to say, I think people tune in every week because of you, not because of us, the guests. (laughs) Well, that's really kind of you. Um, I, I disagree. I respectfully disagree. You know, they, they get all of the great information from uh, you folks. So I just try and make it an enjoyable conversation for everybody. So uh, we will, we will do that again today. Right. So um, I actually would like to start with um, a question that, that has, you know, like stumps me. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting the answer. And it is this, how does a business owner 
turn a profit without changing the way they run their business. So when you say changing the way they run their business, mm -hmm. can we define that a little bit? Yeah, so they're running their business, they've created a system and a process and they find out that they are not profitable. Can they really start to turn a profit if they don't make any changes within the operation of the business? Absolutely. Okay. So when we look at profitability, there are actually 15 different drivers that we work on. Hmm. But the two, the two main drivers for your question that we can literally change almost overnight and immediately be profitable are price. So if I increase my price and I don't change anything else, I'm immediately going to be more profitable. Mm -hmm. The second driver we can do is we can cut spending. And I will tell you, business owners are like people. We all spend too much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's stuff that you're spending on that you don't even realize because you forgot about it. You signed up mm -hmm. for a software service. Somebody's billing you for stuff and you're just not paying attention. And it's, it's downgrading services, canceling services, or just asking yourself, like, we don't even use that anymore. Why are we still paying for it? Yeah, boy, that so resonates with me. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, we, we move two levers. They don't need to be moved a lot. I mean, if you moved each lever 10%, when you increase prices 10%, you cut spending 10%, you've just created a 20% profit margin. Huh. Wow. It sounds so simple when you say it. So <laughs> For the most, you know... And this is where, when we talk about the profit first system, the number one thing people say, oh, it's just so simple, it can't possibly work. Simple works in life, right? Yeah. Like diet and exercise works. It's really simple, but doing simple is hard. Yeah, yeah, right. Because it, it's like a change of mindset, right? It is a change of mindset. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these things are changed. So think about it. Mm. If I tell you to increase your prices, you're like, but but people won't pay. Yeah, actually they will. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised at how much people will pay. But it's a mindset shift, right? And it's the yeah. same thing. Spending is a mindset. Well, I need to spend money to make money. Said the guy selling you stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and he did it very well. Did it very well. <laughs> So let's actually, I want to, because yeah. this reminds me of Parkinson's law. And most people are not aware of Parkinson's law. Mm -hmm. Parkinson's law basically says we will use up all the resources allocated. So your kid's got a book report and it's due in three weeks. Your kid will take three weeks to do it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If it's due in two days, they'll get it done in two days. The reality is it didn't take them three weeks. They wasted the first 19 days because it's, they had the leisure to do it. Mm -hmm. Same thing happens when the sales guy shows up at your business and you say, I've got this project. They're going to ask you two questions. How much money have you budgeted and how much time? And whatever you tell them, they will use up. You tell them it's a hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollar project in six months to get it done. It'll be a hundred thousand dollars in six months. You tell them 10 grand in three weeks, somebody will find you a solution. And that's just the reality of it. Okay, so we, you know, it, it's a mindset shift. So it feels like, you know, the, the typical equation is sales minus expenses equals profit. You say the equation should be sales minus profit equals expenses. And that feels like, you know, what you're talking about, about whatever resources you have allocated that, right, that we should be putting the first thing we should be doing is allotting for profit. And then whatever's left can be used for working on the business. Is that right? That is correct. It is a mindset shift because in the first equation, 
profit comes last. It's a leftover. Yeah. Something you find out like right about this time of year, when you go to your accountant, they go, congratulations, you were profitable. <laughs> and you know, the first question is, where is that money? And they're yeah. like, uh-huh, you spent it. Um <laughs> Then the next question is, you know, how much do I owe in taxes? And and then that's when the business owner freaks out. He's like, how am I supposed to pay that bill? Yeah. But when you use a system like Profit First, the money for taxes is set aside. And that is the number one thing that I hear feedback is tax time comes. We still hate it, but we are no longer nervous. There's no anxiety. We know that whatever that number the accountant gives us, we're going to be able to stroke a check for it. And I, it, over and over again, I hear that story from all of my clients. Hmm. And it's because they put the money aside for taxes up front, just like sales tax, right? Right now, if you collect sales tax, pretty much everyone should be doing this. If you're not, God help you. You put aside the sales tax immediately because you know it's not your money. You should do the same thing for income taxes. Put aside a percentage so when the tax bill comes, the money is there. Okay. So I guess where I, I, I'm stuck is how does a business owner know how much? I, I get the sales tax. That's easy. But, yeah. you know, profit, is that the desired profit? I mean, how, how do they know they, they're covering future expenses. So we do have targets, but they are targets. They are something to aim for. They're not where you are today. So how do you do this? So we've got a saying, profit is not an event, it's a habit. So we're going to build a habit, right? When you go to the gym, the first time you go to the gym and you get on the bench, you don't load that bar up with all the weights, do you? No, because what's going to happen? It's going to crash on you and yeah. kill you. <laughs> you, you know, you start with an empty bar and you learn how to do this. So here's what we're going to do. If you're a business owner and you've never made a profit, we're going to start with 1%. You're not going to miss a dollar out of 100. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get in the habit of putting the dollar aside. As far as taxes, you should be able to, to have a quick conversation with your accountant and they'll tell you what your taxes are for the year. And then you can say, okay, let's say my taxes are $10,000 and my revenue is $100,000. Well, you know that it's 10%. And so put the 10% aside for taxes. And I then see. you know how much you get paid and you know what a percentage mm -hmm. that is of the total revenue. Well, put money aside for yourself to get paid. Here's the really neat thing. Even though we're putting money aside for all of these things, if we hit a hiccup or a storm or something goes wrong, the money's still sitting there in an account. It hasn't disappeared. And so in the beginning, a lot of times the business owners have to steal from themselves. Hmm. But at least you know you're stealing from yourselves and it's an early warning signal you know, uh-oh, I'm stealing from my tax account. Something's going wrong instead of 12 months later. How am I supposed yeah. to handle this? So right. it, it gives you a much more visceral feeling up front that your business is running smoothly. Huh. I'm going to take a quick sponsor break and then I have some more questions for you. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have thousands of titles to choose from, as well as podcasts, Audible originals, guided meditations, and more. One of my favorite audiobooks is Everyone Deserves a Great Manager by Scott Miller. For me, I love being able to listen to it anywhere and across my devices without losing my place. And I think you will too. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth to explore the variety of audiobooks and programs for yourself. Okay. And does this system work for every small business owner? Do you think? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> it does. I mean, it's, it's a really simple system and the money comes in. I know you business owners, you don't look at your accounting software. You look at your bank account. Some mm -hmm. of you do it three, four times a day. 
So what we do is we create the first account, which is income. All your money coming in comes into one account. This way we know how much money came in because all I got to do is look at my bank account. Oh, look how much came in. The next thing we do is we allocate it. So we allocate it to the profit account. And again, if you have to start with 1%, you start with 1%. You allocate it to how much you're supposed to get paid and you allocate it to your tax. And then whatever's left over, you put in your operating expenses and you learn to constrain yourself and live off of your operating expenses. So I tell business owners, you don't need more resources. You need to be more resourceful. You're all smart people. You know how to do this. I just got to put some restraints on you to kind of hold you in line. And that's what this does. And you'll naturally spend less. Interesting. And that's all there is to it. It's really that simple. Okay. So, and, and I mean, it's, it definitely sounds um, not only simple, but easily doable. Um, what happens when a small business is growing into a large business? You know, do they have to change the way they run the business then? So here is the thing that nobody talks about. Most small businesses that are growing into large businesses, they run out of cash flow. Because as they grow, their cash flow dries up. And that is usually what causes them to fail. So they could be profitable, but not have good cash flow. This system is a cash flow management system. So it's going to constrain your growth to some extent, or it's going to force you to think about how you're going to pay for growth. And that is what nobody thinks about. How am I going to pay for growth? Because as you grow, your accounts receivable grows larger. You've got to prepay. So let's take a, an item. Let's say I sell a, a widgets. We'll go okay. with widgets, right? Okay. Sure. If I sell a widget, well, before I sell the widget, what do I have to do? I have to buy the widget. So that means I'm putting out money today to buy a widget. And sometimes it might take me 30 or 60 days for the widget to arrive in my location. Hmm. Now I offer it for sale. Now I sell it to somebody and maybe they're paying me on terms. Maybe it's 30 days till they pay me. Well, right there, we've got about 90 to 120 days. How are you covering that 120 days? Most businesses are not banks. They're not in the business of lending money, but that's what you end up doing if you're not really careful on how that's going. And that's where the struggle comes in for mis most business owners when it comes to this process. Because even before they get paid on that first order, they need to place the second order. So there's money going out again. And it's, it's hmm. being able to make sure you have good cash flow that is the most important thing. And so what, what I do for my clients is we actually predict forward cash flow. We'll sit down and say, what do the next 13 weeks look like? And how is money coming and going over those 13 weeks? Because guess what? It is not a surprise. It's predictable. You know, tax time is not a surprise. We knew it was coming, <laughs> right? Yeah. You, you buy something and you, you, you know, you have to pay for it in 60 days. It's not a surprise. The fact that you forgot about it, well, maybe that's the surprise, <laughs> um, but it's not a surprise. And so learning to predict those things is, is actually pretty easy. People are scared of math. This math yeah. is all second and third grade math. There's nothing to be scared of. It's just taking the time, learning how to do it and actually doing it so that you don't have anxiety and you get to sleep at night. So, so is there any sort of um, predictability or expectation around when a small business should expect to become profitable? Day one. Did you go into business to be unprofitable? Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes back to profit is a habit, not an event. Yeah. If you start, so my friend Paul started a business in 2020. His business plan said, I'm going to be profitable. And he started taking his, taking his, doing the system, taking profit aside immediately as orders came in. 
And every quarter, he was able to take a profit distribution in his first year because he said, I'm running a profitable business. Mm. That's my business plan. I never see unprofitable business plans. What I see is business owners who spend too much. Ah, right, right. It, it is, that that is the drumbeat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And uh, I mean, everyone tells you, you have to spend money to make money. Then yeah. there's all the shiny objects. I need this. No, you want that. I yeah. get it. And a lot of times we, we do what's easy instead of what needs to be done. And so sometimes that drives costs. You know, the reality is, is for most business owners, what they need to do is go out and sell. Instead, they go, I need a fancy website. Mm -hmm. And they spend money that they still haven't generated for an idea that's not fully tested. Go out and sell the idea first, then spend the money on building the infrastructure. Okay. Now for businesses that, that sell like a product or create a product, let's say, um, that they, there is money up front that they're going to have to spend in equipment, raw materials, that kind of thing. So for me, you know, that feels like there, there's a certain level of capitalization that they have to have at the outset because they're going to sell once they have the means to make whatever it is they sell. Is that? That's true. So we are going to have capitalization in the beginning. If you've taken the time to sit down and think about it, you'll know what the capitalization looks like. And then the question is, is, are you going to just stroke a check and start your business by capitalizing it? Or are you going to take a loan? If mm -hmm. you're going to take a loan, well, every 30 days, there's going to be a loan payment. And we know what that payment's going to be. It's not a surprise. Mm -hmm. We can predict that. And then we can say, well, how much do I need to sell to cover that loan payment? So again, you should know that up front because maybe it's going to take us six months to overcome and we're going to have to be making that loan payment ourselves for six months. That's fine. So that's all capitalization. That's money going out that you started with. In the meantime, you implement the profit first system. The money coming in is immediately going to profit. It's immediately going to making sure you're paid. It's immediately going towards taxes. And then the operating money is what you use to pay your loans or at some point in the future to return your capitalization. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. That That's helpful. Yeah. Because if you see a big bank account with a ton of money in it, because you said, okay, I'm going to start this business with $50,000. You will not be surprised at how fast that 50 grand disappears. Mm -hmm. And so you've really got to think of it as this is my capitalization money and it's segregated and separate but my business is going to behave like a profitable business day one. Got it. Okay. Okay. So, and is this why so many small businesses fail within five years? It is. It's, I, I mean, usually it's a, it, it's a, it's a spending problem. It's a pricing problem mm. or it's a product problem. Meaning. So, Here's where I think most business owners struggle. Most business owners are technicians, me included, <laughs> right? Which means yeah. I'm a guy who makes pizzas. That's wonderful. If that's what you do, that, that's lovely. The question you have to ask yourself is, what is the customer's problem? What is their solution? The customer doesn't care of the technical person's solution, like what they do. Mm -hmm. So I'm hungry. I need something to eat. I just want something good. Do I care if it's this pizza or that pizza? Or... Yeah, to some extent, but they're more interested in solving their problem, which is hunger. And the same thing, you know, more B2B, they don't care about what system you use. They care about their outcome. What is the problem that I have? I need more sales. Okay. There's a bunch of ways to do that. We could do marketing. We could do websites. We could do direct mail. The customer really doesn't care which one of those it is. What they care about is that their revenue goes up and they mm -hmm. have more sales. 
too often we focus on that middle part instead of what is the customer's problem? Where is the proposed solution? And will they buy it? And that comes back to sales again. Right. Right. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Let's talk about goals. So I'm curious about what are some long-term goals that small business owners should have? And what are some short-term goals that a small business owner should have? So when you look at goals, to me, they're targets, right? I, mm-hmm. I would never get into an airplane where the pilot said, hey, I don't know where we're going and I hope we have enough fuel to get there. <laughs> um, so when you look at that airplane, number one, you, you have to decide where you're going. So that is your long-term goal. Where am I going? How am I planning on getting there? Generally, when a plane flies from Los Angeles to New York, it's off course 98% of the time, but yet it lands on that runway in New York. So you've got to have that long-term target and you've got to have enough fuel to get there, which is what cash flow is. Mm. And so I think you need your, you know, what do I need to do on a monthly basis? So all of that, you remember we talked about the 15 levers. Mm -hmm. The first lever is you know, what are your impressions? And for every business, it's different. In other words, how many potential people are seeing my offer, whether it's uh, coming to a website, receiving an email, a phone call to, to a potential customer, whatever that is, what is that number? And then what percentage of them end up buying? So that's a conversion rate. How many people do we have a month? That gives you your total sales. Again, it's all math. So having those targets on the short-term targets, in other words, you know, if you're just starting a business, how many people do I need to call this week? And then how many of them converted and actually bought from me? And what was the average price of the sale? And so how much revenue did I get? So those are your short-term metrics of watching towards your long-term goal of where you're going with your company. Okay. All right. I got that. I mean, and I like the idea of taking the long goal and breaking it down into shorter, more immediate goals because they're easier to monitor and, and gauge whether that, you know, it's happening or not. Correct. And the same problem, and there's a lot of books out now on this subject, but it comes back to Parkinson's law if I've got a year to hit my goals, I'll probably waste 10 months. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden come, you know, the end of the year, it's like, oh my God, we got to make sales. And then a burst of activity. Right. Instead of doing the activity all the way along. Yeah. And then you can always measure to see how it's going. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with that. All right. And, and how does a small business owner, how should they be measuring success? For me, it's profit, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Is your company, is your company rewarding you for the time and effort and risk you put into it is essentially what it comes down to. And does it give you the life that you want to lead? And if it doesn't, then you need to ask yourself, is this the business for me? Is this a viable business? Um, Is it something you're doing incorrectly or that needs to be changed? But at the end of the day, if you're going to put your heart and soul into something, you deserve to be rewarded. Definitely. Absolutely. And so developing the habit embracing the habit, right, of being profitable allows you to have all those other things come about. Correct. And I think a a lot of times for the beginner business owner, it's not being able to, not being afraid to charge Mm -hmm. and being confident in your pricing, not basing your pricing on what everyone else is doing, because most of them have no idea where their pricing came from. Mm -hmm. So if you're basing it on their pricing, it's no wonder you're not profitable. The pricing was probably never profitable to begin with. Um, And and being aware of what those numbers are so that you can make the appropriate offers. 
Okay, so this is this is great. I, I appreciate all of this information. If someone is, they've been in business for say six years, and and they're listening to this. Um, first steps they can take or should take to, uh, you know, reframe and and you know shift that mindset, but but really, you know, take a look at their business. What, what would you say? So when I talk to people about this, they go, oh, this is complicated. Oh, there's mm-hmm. too many parts. Is this <laughs> and that? So here's what we tell people. Open one account. Name it profit. In every month, just put 1% of your sales in the profit account mm-hmm. and just let it be. And three months from now, go look at how much money is in there. And then say, did I, did it, did I feel anything different? Did my business run? Was there no struggle? If that's the case, make it 2%. Mm, right. Mm-hmm. Let's see what happens another three months from now. Mm-hmm. If things are good, make it 3%. You're starting to build up the habit and you're starting to see once you start putting three or four or 5% away, you start seeing that number you're going to get motivated to get moving on the rest of the system. Right. I see. Yeah, that's great. That that is great advice. Interesting. Oh my gosh, Rocky. So, so tell the listeners, you know, how they can find you, what you've got going on, please. Best place to find me is profitcomesfirst.com. And if you're listening to this, it's a podcast, whatever podcast player you love. uh, I am pretty much on it's profit answer man and literally we dig into this subject in much more detail i don't give you accountant speak i give you entrepreneurial speak of how to be profitable as an entrepreneur in a way that's understandable to you nice that is great thank you so much for that listeners this is one of those episodes you know you listen to a couple of times and then you go listen to rocky's podcast (laughs) Uh, and uh, I, so thank you, listeners, as well. I'd also like to thank our sponsor. Uh, head on over to audibletrial.com slash business growth. Sign up for the free trial and go exploring uh, and check out you know everything that is there for your listening pleasure. Uh, as always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, Goodbye and good day. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Oh, that's a cheer we used to do in softball. Uh, what? It's, uh, actually Geico. Whenever someone hit a triple, we would wave our bats and yell, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. But we never got to use it because we would only hit home runs. Annoying. The phrase is from Geico because they help save people money. Geico? Yeah. They were our team sponsor. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Me, 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 but also you. <laughs> the Pharaoh fast forwards his favorite foreign film. Powder donut. <clears throat> okay, what's my line? Uh, the only line I see here on the script is get options based on your budget with the name your price tool from Progressive. Oh, man, that's a tongue twister, huh? I'm sorry, I'm going to need a few more minutes. <clears throat> bulbous Walrus, the Bulbous Walrus. The name your price tool, only from Progressive. The owl ran afoul of the comatose Coxswain. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates price and coverage match limited by state law. The world's best-known investor and Wall Street expert, Warren Buffett, once said, Wall Street is the only place that people ride to in a Rolls Royce to get advice from those who take the subway. Mr. Buffett's quote is remarkably accurate, but how many people would rather receive advice from him than someone simply guessing? Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, your single source for Wall Street knowledge and profitable guidance. Please join me, Todd Schoenberger, and fellow trader Tobin Smith, as well as host Veronica Dudo, for a podcast known to move the needle for investors. Tobin and I are seasoned Wall Street executives with deep investment experience, and we are prepared to share our advice to those who choose to listen. Download Buy, Hold, Sell today on the Evergreen Podcast Network or your favorite podcast channel.